So thank you, Jesse. Two things. This is my first chance over the weekend to teach. Because there's a difference between speaking and teaching. So this is a class. This will be like a class, not a, not a drosha. Like a, a class. And number one, I wanted to give a share relating to Pesach. But Jesse said the format is this is for Tanakh study, for the parasha, <laughs> right? So I have to talk about parasha Tashubah, about parasha Tashubah oh, but coming up. Okay. <laughs> Not Korbanot, but about Sefer Vayikra and parasha Shemini. So somehow we'll get to Pesach. But I'll try to follow. Now, um, parasha Shemini begins on what day? Understand my question? Parashat Shmini begins on what day? Yeah, first. Yeah. The first day of Nisan. And why is it called Yom HaShmini? It's eight day Miluim, and the Miluim were beforehand. Now, I mean, one, other than Ebenezer, which is really strange, it's, it's hard to say that the, the Miluim begin on the eighth day of Nisan because then Passover, the, the Nisim are bringing their korbanot during, um, during Pesach, which is strange. That's his question on it. But we'll, we'll assume it's Rosh Chodesh Nisan. We follow we'll go majority rules. Now, what I want to do is try to understand why this topic is in Sefer Vayikra, in Mashmini, where other events on the same day are in different books. Okay? Who knows where else in Chumash there's an event that takes place on Rosh Chodesh Nisan? Don't, don't say where, just raise your hand if you're aware of that, other than a teacher. You understand my question? Okay. I'm asking, is there any other place in Chumash where an event is taking place explicitly on Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Okay, I don't want to hear where. I just want to know how many people are aware. I want to know, I got to judge. I got to know what I'm thinking. I got to know my audience. Okay? So don't be afraid to answer. And if you answer, I might call on you. <laughs> but that would, if someone asked you, where in Chumash is there an event that says explicitly it's happening on Rosh Chodesh Nisan? On, on, on Rosh Chodesh Nisan in the second year. But don't say where. I just raise your hand if you're aware of a place like that. Okay. So since I stayed at Nomi's house, I mean at Nomi, I made that mistake again. At um, um, Marjorie, okay. <laughs> Except for Nomi. Um, so you get the answer, where? Ah, in Parshat HaChodesh, but that was a year earlier. No, that's an event on Rosh Chodesh Nisan, not by chance, which is related. But I want something on the same day as Yom HaShmini, which is Rosh Chodesh Nisan in the second year. Correct? Yeah, in the back? Yeah, okay. So everyone open up. Yeah. The very beginning of Parak Mem and Parshat Pekudeh. Now, how come people are not aware of that? For a good reason. It's at the end of Parshat Pekudeh. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever studies Parshat Pekudeh because it's a repeat. It's like, you know, we did that already in Truma Tetzavim. But open up the very first line of Parak Mem. Parak Mem in Parshat Pekudeh. And see if you can find at least a, a hint to the date. Okay. Sefer Shemot, almost the end of Sefer Shemot, Perak Mem. Okay. You see like a hint to the idea of, Rosh of, the, of the day? <laughs> yeah. What does God tell Moshe? Now you can, our teacher can read. Stephanie's no, brother. That's what I was thinking about. Though. What? That's what I was thinking about. I know, I, but I, I told you I want the specific date. You understand? I want where it says the date itself without any suffix. I, okay, good. Okay. okay, so read the Pasuk. Okay, Perak Mem Pasuk Aleph. More, continue. Okay, so we have the date exact, right? And fast forward to Pasuk Yudzain, verse 17. Let's see if, they, if he followed. What's it say? Read. Okay. So twice in Perak Mem, we have Hakamat HaMishkan. Now, um, what I want you to do is go back to the beginning of the Perak. Go back to the beginning of the Perak. And... Um, Let's see what, what is the commandment to do other than Takim at Mishkan. Okay? It's just re- read two more lines from Pasuk, uh, from Pasuk Gimel. Okay. Okay, one more line. Okay, two more things. Keep going, you're doing good. <laughs> yeah, I can read all Perak, yeah. You're, you're supposed to get it up there, yeah? Okay, now. Yeah. And I hear what I want. Yeah. Oh, that's what's important. We put everything together and we do Meshicha. Meshicha is anointing all the kidding. 
Okay, now, keep that, in mem- keep that in memory, store that in memory. Now a different question for everybody. Okay? Let's say someone asked you, and someone just did, how long was Am Yisrael at Har Sinai for? You understand my question? Don't answer it. Just ask yourself if you could answer it. You know what I'm saying? How long was Am Yisrael encamped at Har Sinai for? I'm, I'm hoping most people can answer that. Because you don't realize you know the answer. But most people don't know the answer. Not good. You're afraid to raise your hands. Okay. One year. Okay. Um, um, almost a year. We'll see. Now, when did we arrive at Har Sinai? That we know. Wait. When did we leave Egypt? 15. No, not Rosh Chodesh. We left 15. on the 15th. Last, last, I mean, last time I read, remember? That, you know, that's, uh, that's our, we're celebrating that. We left on the 15th, and that night or in the morning, you can argue. But we left on the 15th. Okay. And how long did it take us to get to Har Sinai from the time we left Egypt? Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, like six weeks. We count the weeks, don't we? Six weeks. We get there two months later, in the beginning of the third month. Okay. Does that mean on Rosh Chodesh or in the month? Okay, but we could say we arrive in the beginning of, of the third month, which is fine. Okay, and now, now just raise your hand if you know what day we left. You heard it's going to be about a year, but you know the date? Yeah, what was the date? What? Half year. How come no one else knew that? Oh, because you teach it. Okay. Okay. You know why no one knows that? We left Har Sinai on the 20th of Iyar in the second year. You know why no one knows it? Rashi doesn't bring it down. <laughs> now, you know Rashi, why Rashi doesn't bring it down? Because the Chumash says so. He doesn't need to. It's a Pasuk in what's Parsha? In uh, okay. We'll see that soon. Now, is that how long we were supposed to be there for? Yeah. What was your, if, if you were if you were at the Exodus, if you were, if you were in Egypt, and you heard Moses come to the people and say, you know, God appeared to me at the burning bush, Remember that story? And come and think, I'm coming to take you out of Egypt and bring you where? What did he tell, not what he told Paro, what did he tell B'nai Yisrael? Where are we going? Israel. Uh, remember? And God tells them, not to lie, God tells them, tell the people we're going to Eretz Yisrael, the land I promised your forefathers. And that's what he tells his kingdom to tell the people, doesn't he? So when they leave Egypt, what are they expecting? Well, they're supposed to go to Israel. No one told them they're going to Mount Sinai. And for sure they wouldn't have left. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's God telling Moshe what to tell Pharaoh. Or why? But God, Moshe doesn't, God, God tells Moshe, in, in Pasuk, take a look. It says, Lech vasafet zigne Yisrael. In Paragimel, Pasuk Tetzayin says, Go gather them and tell them what? Okay? Hashem no, elokei, Avram Yitzchak, Nirai Lai. Okay. I'm taking you out of your affliction in Egypt. I'm coming to fill Ben Abitarim and bring you to the Eretz Abad Chalabud Vash. And therefore, they're expecting to go to Israel. That's why they complain all the time. Remember? They think they're on a death march because they're not going to Israel. Now, why don't they go right there? There's a good reason why they don't go right there because God's not taking you out of Egypt just to get out of Egypt. God wants them to be a nation. And to be a nation, first we have to have a Brit. So therefore we have to get to Har Sinai. Now, how long should it take them to get to Har Sinai? It wasn't supposed to take six weeks, was it? How long was it supposed to take? Well, how far is it from Egypt to Mount Sinai? It's a three-day distance, isn't it? That's at the burning bush. Derek Shoshik Tamim. should take them three days. So when we cross the Amistu, if we travel three days, do we get to Har Sinai? No, we didn't. We had a bad GPS. Where did we go to? We went to Mara. And then we went to Palm Springs, didn't we? Remember? What was Palm Springs? Remember Elim? There's 70 palms in 12 springs. We should have left. <laughs> but we left there, and then we went to Midbar Sin. No food, remember? Then we had the Mont story for a week or two. And then we went to Rafidim, no water. And then we go to Har Sinai. Now, why is that taking so long? Because we would like Amisro to get to Torah, but we can't get to Torah until we're ready. If you remember the whole story of the man, what did God say? The man, Before we can receive the Torah, we have to be ready to receive the Torah. And therefore, all the events that take place when we leave Egypt until we get to Har Sinai, our preparation, are you ready? It's like basic training. Are you ready to get to Har Sinai? And until we keep mitzvot, like taking as much man, remember, with the man, take as much as you need, as much as you want, and not kicking on Shabbat, we have to teach him little by little first in Yenei Shabbat. And in the name of sharing and showing people and showing God can do miracles and things like that. 
and Harstein becoming a source of water. After we have that, then, then we get to Harstein. What does God say? Look what I did for you. Remember, Look what I did for you. Now, will you work for me? Remember, and we have what's called Brit Sinai. What should happen right after Brit Sinai? We, got the, we heard the Luch, we heard the Aserat Tadibrod, and we got Parshat Mishpatim, and we had a Kiddush, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Remember the Kiddush? We had Fleshiks, we had Shlamim, and we took the blood, and everyone got sprinkled, everyone got baptized, didn't we? With blood, the real thing? Mm-hmm. Not that cheap water stuff. <laughs> 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 um, and we said, Nasev and Ishma, Moshe Red Sefer Abrit, and we got all the laws of Parshat Mishpatim. Where should we go? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we can't go right away. Because before, after Parshat Mishpatim, God tells Moshe, come on up to Tar Sinai, to get what? More laws. Now, you got, you got the short version, there's more laws to keep. And Moshe tells the people in the end of Parshat Mishpatim, I'm going up to get to Torah and the Mitzvah. I'll be back when I get back. And who's the babysitters? Aaron and Chor, remember? Well, how come I'm calling them babysitters? Because babysitters don't decide what school you're going to. They give you supper, Right? And if you cut yourself, they'll give you a band-aid. And if necessary, they might even take you, you know. But, but they're not going to make, they're not saying where we're going for summer vacation. They're not going to decide what school we're going to and who are you going to marry. You understand? Babysitters babysit. And therefore, their job is to babysit. What's the problem? What's the babysitter do when the parents don't come home? Now we've got a problem, right? And they don't have cell phones back then. And therefore, what happened? When Moshe's up on Harsinai, we have a crisis, don't we? That's the story of Chata Ega. And when Moshe comes down from Har Sinai, what should have happened, had we not seen with Chata Ega, what would have happened? What would have happened? What? Not right. I mean, first Moshe would teach the laws, yeah. and then we'd go to Israel. With the Mishkan, without a Mishkan, that's the Ramban. I mean, that's, that's Malchuk at Ramban and everybody else. And Ramban says we would have had a Mishkan no matter what, and everyone else says that we only need the Mishkan because of, that's going to be important for our shir. But I'll follow everybody else in the meantime. The, the main laws Moshe got on, on Har Sinai in the first 40 days are the laws of Sefer Devarim. That's what Sefer Devarim says. About how to become God's nation in Israel. And he should have taught the laws of Sefer Devarim. But he can't. Why? Because we have a crisis. And then we have to solve the crisis. Which needs to... Because the first break didn't work. It was too strict. And therefore the rest of Sefer Shmuel deals with what topic? I need a new contract. Correct? And what's this contract need? This contract needs, what's it need? The contract needs God to be a little more forgiving. I can't expect you to be so perfect. Remember the first contract was, it was too strict. It was very rewarding and very demanding. And there was no room for making mistakes. And therefore you make a mistake, you're finished. And therefore Moshe says, we want to be your people, but take it easy on us pretty much. Remember Tefillah? And God says, you know what? I'll be a Kel Rachum B'chanun. Remember we talked about that's, that's a topic for Yom Kippur. Okay. Now that we have a new contract, we need a new contract, don't we? Because the first one got broken. Okay. And therefore Moshe Davins for 40 days to negotiate are we worthy of a new contract? And then he goes up 40 days to get another contract. Got it? And that's when we get the laws of the Mishkan if I follow Chazal. And therefore, what should happen when Moshe comes down? What day does Moshe went? Let's get the date. When does he come down the first time? When does he break the Luchot? No, not Shabbat. On 17th, because take the 7th of Nisan, 7th of Sivan, add 40 days, you get the 17th of Tammuz. He breaks the Luchot, then he davens for 40 days. So he davens for 40 days from the 18th of Tammuz until when? Add 40 days? No, no. He davens for 40 days. Do the math. It's this 18th day of the 4th month, add 40 days. Almost. The last day of Alf. Correct? It's over. And God says, come on up. We'll give you a new contract. When does he go up for the new contract? Rosh Chodesh He comes down 40 days later on Yom Kippur. Got it? That's the timeline of Flemish, isn't it? Now, when he comes down, what should he do? Teach the laws. But what laws did he get? God said, before we can leave Har Sinai, what do we need? We need the Shekinah to come back. Remember the Shekinah left? And we can't leave. This is what's important for the Shir. You can't leave Har Sinai <coughs> without God's Shekhinah. You know why? Because where are we going to? And what do we have to do when we get there? 
We have to conquer the land. But conquering the land will be impossible without God's help. Isn't it? That's what Moshe says even 40 years later. You need to know that it's impossible to conquer the land. In fact, if you follow the way I understand Peshat, why does God tell Moshe to send the Baraklin? Okay. What, what report should the Baraklin come back with? Positive one. No, exactly the opposite. I know that's what they taught you. Right? But that's what Chumar says. And that's what Moshe says. They're supposed to come back and say, it's impossible to conquer the land. But I'm sure what I mean. As long as you're asking. You'll read, you'll read for us now. Open up Sefer Devarim, Perek Tet. The first lines. Listen to Moshe Rabbeinu himself. He sounds just like the Maraglim. <laughs> Sefer Devarim, Perek Tet. I'm telling you something people don't realize. Why'd they get punished? What? Why'd they get punished? We'll see. Oh, yeah. It'll, it'll explain what's happening in Parsha Shemini soon. So now we'll get to Parsha Shemini. <laughs> yeah. Read Perak the first line. Whoa. Is it exaggerating like the Maraglim? Keep reading. Go on. Aren't you surprised? Yeah. We're saying it's impossible. And you, and you need to know it's because it is impossible. You know that means the Maraglim. And they were told, <laughs> They were supposed to lie, they were supposed to tell the truth. Now, continue, Moshe. Okay. In other words, the only way you can possibly conquer the land is with what? It's with God's help. Now, as long as you're in Sefer Dvarim, go to Perak Yud Aleph, Pasuk Chabet, which is the continuation of his speech. Yeah. Now, now that I know that it's impossible to conquer them without God's help, what do I need to do? How do you get God's help? Not emunah. That's not enough. Right after Shema. Perek Yudal Pasu Chabet. Well, continue. Okay. Okay. Understand? Now you got the point? Mm-hmm. Why do we need to know how difficult it is? Because God's goal is that we become His nation and keep His laws. Okay. And we need to know that the only way we could possibly conquer Canaan is if we're dedicated to keeping the mitzvot, because that's God's goal. God's goal is not to conquer the land, but God's goal is that we be dedicated to keep His mitzvot, to be His nation. And there's no point in conquering the land if we don't want to be Keep mitzvot. And therefore, it's important to know it's impossible with mitzvot because that should motivate them to keep the mitzvot. Now, let's say the leadership says, hey, these people are losers. Like, remember, you teach in school, right? You teach? Right? What if your attitude of a teacher is, these kids will never learn a thing? They don't learn. Right? They don't learn. They're bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, they and won't learn. They won't learn. Right? No, if, if, you don't believe, if you don't believe in your students, they're not going to learn. But if you believe in them, they still won't. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> they, they might. <laughs> In other words, what's the job of leadership? They, yes, you can, but it'll be difficult. Okay? What, what was their option? If they thought, there's no way we can keep this mitzvot, and therefore, if we would go into Canaan at our religious level, what will happen to us? We're going to get killed. And we're going to be, that's what they say, isn't it? And therefore, what other option do they have? Egypt, and not be God's people. So their decision is, we'd rather be slaves in Egypt, or return to Egypt, than be God's people. It's because they don't want to keep the mitzvot. That's the problem. That's why as soon as you say, oh, no, when the Uyghurs say, no, let's go conquer it anyhow, God says you're wasting your time. God doesn't need people to believe that God can. Right? Many people understand that we have to be worthy of God's help. I don't believe, yes, He can help me. I need to know that I have to be worthy of His help. That's two different things, isn't it? It's a different, yeah. It's worse than that because they said, Hayesh Atlantic, they, don't even, I, yeah. they were atheists. No, they, they, they know this. They believe in God. They, they, they think God wants them dead. They don't believe in God. There is Hayesh Adonai Bekirbeinu. Bekirbeinu means, is he helping us? But what do they say? We're all going to die. Every time they go, you said, Moshe, you brought us here to die. It's, everyone believes in God. The question is, whose team is he on? Is he working for you or are you working for him? Anyway, that's a philosophical topic. Now, why is this all important? In order to go to Israel, you need God's help. Now, to get God's help, you need a Shekhinah. Shekhinah is a reflection. Is God with you or not? And what do we do to show God we can follow commandments? That's, we have to prove to God we learned our lesson after Chet So we get a project. It's called a class project, like your camp project. 
we, need a, we have to do something. Last time, everything was too passive getting out of Egypt. God says, you know what? means, <coughs> show me, if I give you a set of laws in a group project, you can do it and follow orders. Okay? Now, let's go back to Shemot Perak Mem. And take a look. That's why you need a Tzachor. You can't do this with a source sheet. Okay? Look at Shemot Perak Mem. It's a summary after all the, all the commandments to do. Remember? Vasita, 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 Vasita. And the commandments. Okay? And here, Vasu, Vasu, Vasu. Yeah? It's, you can't miss the word do it, like, to do something. It's like the buzzword. Vasu okay? Mikdash. And the word Asiya is in every single header. Now, look at Perak Mem when they put the Mishkan together. There's lots of paragraphs, aren't there? There's lots of parshiot. Okay? Look how every single parshia ends. With what phrase? Take a look. You have to see it inside. You see how all the parshiot end? How? What? How's every single parshia end? Probably twenty of them. Kasher si vashavet Moshe, isn't it? And if you look at the end of Perak Lametet, it's even a bit nicer. Read the last line of Perak Lametet. It's like even wordier. Oh, just that sounds like Vaychulu, right? Does God finish creating and He blessed it? Moshe blesses it, and then Vatechel. You, you, you understand what happened in the end of Sefer Shemot? And now they did such a good job of following orders. What's God willing to do now? Now go to the end of Perak, Perak Mem. Yeah, Pasuk Lama You have it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, read it, Stephanie. Ah. When was the last time we had Kvod Hashem? Huh? Yeah. It said Kvod Hashem? Read that Pasuk again. Remember that line? Keep your finger there. Go back to Shmot Perak Chavdalad, Pasuk Tetvav. When Moshe goes up to get the, the, the first 40 days, to get all the laws that they were supposed to get right away. Yeah, read it, Stephanie. Perak Chavdalad, Pasuk Tetvav. Vayal Moshe El Hahad, Vayal Moshe El Hahad, Vayal Moshe El Hahad. One more line. Do you need more than that? Do you understand what needs to happen? Because this is the, the, this is the anchor of the Ramban Shita, that what is the function of the Mishkan? The Mishkan will be a constant reminder of Har Sinai. Got it? Now, Har Sinai is our commitment to be God's people. I need a reminder. I need like an icon. I need some symbol, not to remember that God works for me, that I work for God. Okay. And what brings the Shechina? What's important for bringing Kormot doesn't bring the Shechina. What brings the Shechina? But we just read in Perak Mem. Doing what? Kasher Siva Shevet Moshe. Obedience and willingness and eagerness to follow God. That, that's going to be my, my reminder. Once I'm working for God, I need a reminder who my team is and who my boss is. So I need, remember, Ba'asudim Mikdash for Shechanti Betocham, not Betocho. God doesn't need a house. If we're God's people, we need a reminder. Like, we need a reminder of our commitment. And therefore, looking at the Mishkan and visiting the Mishkan reminds us that we're God's people. And we have to be committed. Not that he'll do miracles for us, but we have to be worthy of him doing miracles for us. We have it. And therefore, I'm going to travel with the Mishkan, and then we can come visit and things like that. And therefore, um, no, go back to the end, go back to Perak Mem. Again. Uchvar Hashem Aleta Mishkan. Is that good or bad? Okay. Well, should Moshe go in? Why would Moshe want to go in? Ah, because we, we received the Torah at Har Sinai, and if the Mishkan is replacing Har Sinai, if God is going to continue to talk to Moshe Rabbeinu as they travel, where is God going to talk to Moshe Rabbeinu from? From the Kodesh Kodeshim, between the Kruvim. And therefore, Moshe should go in to get the more get laws. But Moshe can't go in until he's called. Just like in the end of Sefer, the end of Parshat Mishpatim. Therefore, Moshe is waiting outside, outside the Anan, just like Har Sinai. Waiting for what? For God to call him in, to talk to him, to tell them the more laws. Does that ever happen? That's Sefer Vayikra. In other words, these two psukim continue into Sefer Vayikra. Keep that, keep that in mind. Now, um, what happens next in Pasuk Lamed Dalet and Lamed Pasuk Lamed Vav? Okay. Why? Kiyom, kiyom. Don't stand up. Well, that's an introduction to what book? 
Shev That's Sefer Bamibar, isn't it? That's exactly Parsha Balotcha, isn't it? What you're teaching. Yeah. It's, it's word for word repeated in Paraket per- and later in, per- in Perak Yud. We travel following the Anam. So Sefer Shmod ends with the Shekhinah finally returning. And now that the Shekhinah is back, there's two things that can continue that were being held up. The whole process of receiving the Torah, now we get more laws that reflect the fact that we serve God. Now, what was our commitment in Har Sinai? Okay. Now that we've rebuilt the Brit, we can become an Am Kadosh. Now we know what does that make us... No, now the fact that we're God's Am Kadosh and the, and the covenant is back, I need to know how to act as an Am Kadosh. So is there a pair called Kadoshim to you? Right. Words, the second half of the book will be a guide. Now that God Shechina is among you, what does that mean about your behavior? I'm holding you now to a higher standard. And therefore, there'll be laws about Kedusha of Adam, Kedushim to you, Kedusha of Kohanim, Parshat Amor, Kedusha of Zman, Moadim, remember, and more, and Kedusha Makom, Shemitan Yovel, and then what happens if you keep the laws and don't keep the laws of Tochacha? Got it? That's the second half of Vayikra. What's the first half of Vayikra? Now that God's with you, you know what? You can come visit. I'm not that distant, right? You would think, oh, he's so cool. Yeah. There's a problem of too much fear, and therefore God says, you know what? I'm here, and you can come visit me. But not so fast. <laughs> Meaning what? You can't come empty-handed. If you want to come, there's protocol. Like when you go to someone's house for Shabbat, there's protocol. You can either bring, I always joke around, you don't bring someone, yeah, you, they don't need to receive, you need to bring. So you don't bring a bag of potatoes, even though they might need that. You bring something <laughs> symbolic, right? You bring like a, a bottle of wine, you bring, you know what you bring, it's not whatever it is. You bring a korban shlamim, like you bring cake that you like, you know. <coughs> or you bring a korban olah, which is flowers, not flower, but flowers, but you get nothing out of it. <coughs> yes. Now, um, so you can go in, but you're not going, so I always joke around, so my students come to the house for Shabbos and they bring a bag of potatoes to my wife and saying, this is in honor of Shabbos, and she doesn't know what's going on. And then they tell you, well, you have to be in your husband's class. <laughs> I understand. So, and we happen to eat potatoes, so we felt good. <laughs> now, um, back to our share, I'm sorry. Um, the, the idea is that you can visit, and there's protocol for visiting to make it meaningful. On the other hand, you just can't barge in all the time. And there's certain times when you can't visit, which is when? When you're tamay. There are timeouts. Right. In your relationship with God, not you did something wrong. Sometimes you don't run to God right away. There was a death, take a week off. You, see? you had a baby, don't come running to God. Wait a week or two, a month or two. You follow? Take care of your kid, take care of yourself. There are certain times you don't run to God. Not, remember, every two mothers tara afterwards. That's what's important in Sefer Vayikra. But Sefer Vayikra is saying we're regulating our connection to God. You can visit, but it's got to be something you have to be prepared for it. And that's why the one day Tuma, the day before you go to the Mikdash, you have to be careful of everything you touch. You're like the OCD for a day, aren't you? Remember the, the light Tuma, the one day Tuma? Any dead animal, any dead old, like, it's really hard, and that's going to keep you on your toes the day before you visit. But the idea is if you're going to visit God, it's got to be something special. It's like getting ready to, you know, preparing for something. Now, that's the first half of Ayikra, but when you visit, how you come, and how you bring the Korban for the Kohanim, and when you don't come, and then the highlight of all that is going to be on Yom Kippur, when we do the most symbolic act, what happens on Yom Kippur? We have the highest level of Dushan in all three realms. Remember, Dushat Adam, the Kohen Gadol, Dushat Makom, the Kodesh Kodeshim, and Dushat Zman, Shabbat Shabbaton. Remember? And then all the highest levels of Dushan come together. But what the Kohen Gadol is doing with thing, the Kohen Gadol is going to relive, symbolically, Har Sinai with the second Luchot. Isn't he? Because if the Mishkan is like Har Sinai, when Moshe goes up to get the second Luchot with God's Bidot Torah he goes up all by himself, doesn't he? He doesn't eat. He goes inside, and when he comes down, his face is beaming. Remember Mari Kohen? So by the time I would show you that everything the Kohen, doing, the Kohen God is doing in Yom Kippur, we're reliving, almost like, like a theater, we're reliving, receiving the second Luchot to come with Midot Torah And therefore, what's the theme of Tfilot and Yom Kippur? Midot Torah Hamim. What's that to do with Yom HaShemini? <laughs> topic? We'll see. Because <coughs> my first question is, what day was Yom HaShemini? So Yom HaShemini was the same day. How do we know? We'll figure out in a minute. But we're not yet ready yet. <laughs> Why? Because Yom HaShemini is mentioned explicitly in another, almost explicitly, implicitly in another book. What other book? How many books are left? Well, 
Is, does Sefer Bamidbar talk about Rosh Chodesh Nisan? Yeah. Explicitly? Uh, or implicit? Okay. So open up Sefer Bamidbar, Perak Zayn. Open up Sefer Bamidbar, Perak Zayn. Yeah. Have it? Look, Sefer Bamidbar, Perak Zayn. And you need a good memory here. Everyone have it? Yeah. Sefer Bamidbar, Perak Zayn. And look how it begins. Yeah. Okay, Stephanie? Listen, everyone have it? Perek Tet? What did I say? Perek Zayn. Perek Zayn. I'll get to Perek Tet in a minute. Perek Zayn. Yeah. Stop, okay? When did this happen? When Moshe finished putting up the Mishkan. Do we know what day that was? Yeah. And what did he do on that day? Continue. Um, ring a bell? Wait. Why, why is that important now? What's, what does that prove? Remember I had you read all the way to Pasuk Tet in Perek Mem? Okay. Remember Vayim Shachotam on that day? That was explicit in Perak Ben, wasn't it? Vayim Shachotam, Vayim Shachotam, Vayim Shachotam, Vayim Shachotam, Vayim Shachotam, Vayim Shachotam, Vayim Got it. That's a summary of the first ten lines of Perak Ben and Shemot. Right? Therefore, implicitly, what day are we at? Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Understand? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, that's Perak Zayim. Mm-hmm. Um, and what happens on that day? In Perak Zayim? All the missing Ah, it's that we put the Mishkan together, and even though they weren't commanded, remember the whole parak was Kashir Siva Shabbat Moshe? Then the scene of the chutzpah to do what? Do something they weren't commanded to do. What did they do? They brought a donation, didn't they? Where did they donate? Remember what they donated? Where did the Mishkan? Take a look. Take a look, quick look. We're in Perak Zion, right? Mm-hmm. It's Rosh Chodesh Sisan, and they're coming, and we put the whole Mishkan together. And they come with a donation, right? Yeah. What did they, what did they donate? Six, six little calves? What are Eglotzav? Okay. Six wagons. Eglotzav, that's a transport wagon. Okay. Why Tzav? Because they go slowly, like a turtle. And Agla, is that Agla like a, a wagon? Yeah. But what's going to, there's no motor. What, how many horsepower are they? Actually, two, they're two ox power. It's, every wagon has an engine with two, ox, with two ox, oxen. Got it? Mm-hmm. And therefore, if there's six wagons, how many oxen do we have to bring? Twelve. Isn't that exactly the psukim? Yes. So the Nassim bring a nice present. Now, why is that a very fitting present to bring to Akhamata Mishkan? Think, think like leaders. Right? It's because what's special about the Mishkan? It's portable. it's portable, isn't it? Well, when it's portable, it means you've got to schlep it. And it's heavy stuff there, isn't it? So, hey, we just built a Mishkan, we've got to travel with it to Israel. Hey, they're thinking out of the box, aren't they? You know, God should have thought of this, right? <laughs> Let, let's, these poor Levine, they have to step all through the desert. So where do they donate? Right. Got the newest model, like, like, what was it, 1800 BCE model, what do you call it? Um, you know, trucks. Okay, that was serious stuff they owned. Now, was that okay or not? Did they have to get permission for this? Yeah. What did God say? Yes, hey, so that's awesome. a good initiative. What's really cool in Sefer Bamidbar, some initiatives are good, like Benot Slovchad, right? Women taking, you know, um, what's it called? Um, incentive, right? And saying we can also be involved. Okay? Pesach Sheni is a good incentive. Other incentives are pretty bad. Like Miriam talking about her brother, and Aaron, I'm sorry, you have to be equal. And uh, what else was bad? Um, Korach, pretty bad incentive, right? Some incentives are good. No, not all incentives are good, not all incentives are bad. Read the Jewish week. The, you, the, um, it's interesting to say, bro, because it's all about leadership, the book, isn't it? But for some good reason, even though it's the same day chronologically, because Sefer by Midbar is about leadership and travel, it's the same day, but what topic is focused on in the Mishkan? It's Yom HaKamata Mishkan. For a good reason now, Sefer by Midbar focuses on the leadership issue. And what's our big leadership? The Nisim, bring what? Bring wagons. On top of that, they donate a kiddush, don't they? Mm-hmm. And they do something that's unheard of nowadays, right? They all donate a kiddush, and no one outdoes anybody else. <laughs> don't they? Because what kiddush do they donate? In addition to the wagons, hey, we have to celebrate. And what do they all bring? They all bring the exact same thing. It's so important, Chumash waste 80 psukim, don't they? You know, you know the whole laning for Hanukkah, Parshat Nassau. That's why Nassau is the longest parsha. Yeah. We go out of our way to describe that every single one brought, a friend of mine told me, that why, do, why is it so repetitive? Every time Chumash repeats something, there's always the little changes, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Remember, even the Ten Commandments, they can't get it straight. Yeah. Now, so Chazal always learn from the differences, don't they? 
So one time, Chumash has to teach us, I know how to copy something. <laughs> <laughs> so you shouldn't say we don't know how to copy. So one time we show we teach everyone I know how to copy something word for word. And if therefore later on when they make changes, there's a reason for it. Remember with the uh, Unis Kev, these common things like that, all the Limudim? So that's a great and I may even be shot, but it's a nice nice insight. Now, so I'm trying to explain I think what was the title the same day in three books? Or not that wasn't that what was the title? Something about Yomash Mini? That was it? <laughs> That's your fault, because you wanted to share on Yom Hashemini. I haven't talked about Yom Hashemini yet, have I? <laughs> We're getting there. <coughs> but now, I know the same date, I have the same event is in the end of Sefer Shemot, but there's no doubt the same event is in, is in Sefer Bamidbar. Okay. But what happens, now, I'll go back to Perak Zion in a minute in Sefer Bamidbar. <coughs> Look how Perak Tep begins. What? I'm sorry, in, no, not in Perak, how Perak Tep begins. Perak Tep begins... Also, yeah, in its second year. Yeah, but it's already, it's, it's two weeks later. But look in Perak Ted, Pasuk Ted Vav. No, but the Perak starts by Yasuba Bimo Ado, so it might be Alf Nisan in that also. Yachom Rosh Chodesh? Because it says, Be Yasuba Mesa Ta Pesach Bimo Ado. Bimo Ado, we're in Rosh Chodesh Nisan? He did that on Mitzrayim, he did that already. It could be, okay, that's Abba Mina Nagara. But it said, but then it says, Barbasar Yom Nochodesh, they did it. Yeah, then no, 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 it starts with that, and it says, V'ya'asu, and it just says, B'chodesh Arishon, without a date. Uh-huh. And we said, B'chodesh Arishon, without a date, also means, What? That day. All it says is, V'setah Meret Yisrael, B'chodesh Arishon, Lemor, V'ya'asu B'nei Yisrael Tafasach. So that pasuk could be out. Yeah, but I'll, I'll show you why it's going to be later in a minute. But I, I, before I forget, go to Pasuk Tetvav. Yeah. As you'll see. Look, look how Pesach Tetvav begins. Okay, that's a, a leap back to what, that's a leap to what day? Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. That's exactly the last lines of Sefer Shemot, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So I have a perfect link. So both Perak Zayin and Perak Tet, in the middle of Perak Tet, are, Rosh Chodesh, are, are the same day. And those that came to continue the end of Sefer, Sefer Shemot. Remember? About traveling with the... So there's no doubt that day continues. Now, something important though is happening. What happens in, Sefer, in the end of Sefer Shemot? At the end of Sefer Shemot, the Anan carries it. Moshe is waiting outside, waiting for God to call him in. And then God calls him in the beginning of Vayikra and talks to him from where? From the Omoed. Now, what brought the Shekhinah in Sefer Shemot? What, what, what did Amisra have to do to bring the Shekhan and Sefer Shemot? What? They built Kashur Siva Hashem and Moshe. They followed orders. Look, go back to Perak Zayim and look at Pasek Pechet. Actually, look at Pasek Pechet. It's bad enough we repeat it every single day, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Keeps the Balkor really busy. That makes room for more Hasafot. Now we often more donations. <laughs> so you have... Yeah, you have you have all day, and then we have to teach ourselves multiplication. Right? It's bad enough we have every day. What happens in pasuk pedalet? What's it say? Zot. Zot and everything times twelve. Okay? And to add it, all that together, look at pasuk pechet. Listen carefully now. Zot. Atol. Okay. This is not a summary of what was brought after 12 days. What is this? This is a summary of what was brought on the first day. You don't understand what I just told you. Okay? It wasn't that every Nasi brought their Korban a day at a time. But rather, on the very first day, what did all the Nasi bring? They all brought the same thing together on the first day. You understand? I hope you follow what I'm getting at. Okay? Now it's, so how come they all brought one big present together, everyone brought the exact same thing on the first day? So why do we spread it out? Go back now. Go back to pe- the beginning of Perak Zion. Look at Pasuk Tet. I mean, Pasuk Yud. Yeah. You see? What, what? They all brought the Korban on the same day. Yeah, read, read Pasuk Yud. Have it, Stephanie? Yeah. What's that referring to? Zot Chanukah Tamizbeach Be'amim Meshachoto. So what did they bring on the very first day together with the wagons? Read, read now. Uh, yeah. They brought it, they didn't offer it, they brought it closer, they, and they wanted to bring it that day. They're donating this massive kiddush on the first day. Now listen carefully. Ah, again, again they take initiative. And, right, because 
I think it might be a little dangerous bringing a korban on your own on that day. Isn't that a little scary? If everything's kashem sivat shemet Moshe, isn't it dangerous coming up with your own ideas about what korbanot to bring? Give me an example. Ah, what the, uh, that, we finally got to Parshat Shemini. <laughs> some initiatives are good. Some, oh boy, you follow? But they bring it. They must have asked permission because what does God tell Moshe? What, what, what did we just say? What did God tell Moshe? Kach okay. mi'ita. Now read, read the next line. No, no, go back a line. Moshe, yeah. yeah. Who decided one nasi a day? God. That was God's. Was that not neat? They all bring the same thing. No one outdoes each other. And now God says what? Now that you know how to do things equally, now every nasi gets his own day. Right? And how many days pass? Twelve. Twelve, maybe thirteen, depending whether Shabbat you brought in the Daba. Ah, what day are we up to? We should have left Har Sinai the second the Shekinah comes back. Why don't we leave Har Sinai on the second day of Nisan? There's a Kiddush. Is it? It's a 12-day or 13-day Kiddush, isn't there? No one's going to leave now. So now it's the 13th of Nisan. Now we should go to Israel. Why can't we go to Israel? It's Erev Pesach. You can't leave Erev Pesach, right? You understand my proof that it's got to be... That's why the next story... The next story is going to be you, though. What? Story is no, that also happened on Rosh Chodesh Nisan. But it's a flashback. Right, right? so that could be a Yeah, but I'm saying, the Nisim are bringing the Korbanah on those 12 days, then it makes sense that they brought Korban Pesach. Yeah. Okay, it could be, but that's, that's not the important point of this year. When was the Mishkan ready to be... Ah, so Chazal have a beautiful insight. They say that all the work of the Mishkan was finished Hanukkah time, and they could have fit, put it together Hanukkah, but God said, wait for Rosh Chodesh Nisan. So why are we waiting? What? No, why did the rabbis make up that midrash? <laughs> I think it took six months. It wait for three. You wait for a significant day. Because the day that's Rosh Hashanah is a significant day. I mean, the, uh, the main point is to go to Israel. The main point is to go to Israel, and this is... Yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah. also, it's also um, war season in the spring. Late say Lachim. So it's a good time to go to war. And also, it could take longer. Maybe we need six months of rehab. It takes a while, but it takes to work out nicely. How about the census? What? The census. What about the census? Which, what, which census? The first one. The first census... It sounds like in Nisan. Everything was happening in Nisan. No, no, no. The first census had to be taken when they built the Mishkan. According to Parshat Pekudeh, okay, we counted all the people when they donated the money. So the first census had to be in, in after Yom Kippur. In Cheshvan, probably. When they start bringing all the things to the Mishkan. Don't they need silver for the Mishkan? Where, where did the silver from the Mishkan come from? For the Adonim? From Machsita Shekel. So we counted all the people. We got 603,550, 603, something like that. Yeah. 603,550 was the total based on the Machsita Shekel. Because we got 301,000 number 775 Shekelim. You do the math. It's all in Parsha Pekudeh. And therefore we must have counted all the people when? Before we built the Mishkan. It says so. And we built the Mishkan... And we didn't count the people yet. Kitisah. What? Kitisah. Kitisah was commanded before we put the Mishkan together. That was commanded on, our, on the last 40 days, and we fulfilled it after Yom Kippur. Mm-hmm. Understand? No. But your question is good, because watch what's going to happen now. Because we count them again, don't we? In Sefer Bamidbar. Yeah. Why? We'll see what a minute. We should go, we can't go to Israel until we have the Mishkan. You understand why now? Because I can't go without God with. That was my whole first point. If God's not with me, I can't conquer the land. So I need to make sure the Shekhinah returns. Okay, now, what brings the Shekhinah in Sefer Shemot? Kasher Siva Hashem and Moshe. Okay. What, what, what's what brings the Shekhinah in Sefer Bamidbar? Go back to Perak Zayin. Because in, in Perak, we're waiting for Moshe to go in to get the Dibor from Hashem, right? So in Sefer Shemot, we're about to get the Dibor, but we're waiting for something. We're waiting for God to call Moshe in, aren't we? Aren't we waiting? Mm-hmm. That, that happened the same Friday, but it's the same day. Okay. But what was the critical point where God says Moshe can come in? Look now, go back where you were before. I started stopped in the middle. Go back to Perak Zayin, Pasuk Pechet again. Remember? Zot Chanukat HaMizbeach Bami Mishachoto. And that should be the end of the Perak, shouldn't it be? Look at Perak Zayin again. Shouldn't Pasuk Pechet be the end of the Perak? Mm-hmm. Okay. You understand? It's a perfect ending. And if Pasuk Pechet wasn't there, no one would say it's missing. Correct? Look at Pasuk Pechet. Should bother everybody. You see Pasek Peitet? Yeah. 
Du promoshe elol ma et daber ito va yishma et hakol mi daber elav me al hakaporet asher al aron haedut mi ben shnei akrubim va daber elav. What's that doing under? Yeah, is that totally out of place? And it's also wrong. Right? It's in, no one pays attention because no one st- we stop paying attention after two or three in the scene. <laughs> Even the Bakor is not paying attention. He could skip it there too. No one would notice. Yeah. Understand? But that last line, how did that get there? Isn't that last line strange? It's also not God calling Moshe. The last line of Perak Zion. Pasuk Peitet. Doesn't belong there. Hey, we know that already, don't we? We know that from Pasha Truma that's supposed to happen. But this is what's called present perfect. When Moshe would go into the Lord to speak to God, okay? God would talk to him from on top of the Kruvim. When did that happen? The first line of Sefer Vayikra, isn't it? So what brought the Shekhinah back? According to Sefer Bamidbar. The Nesim bringing all the same Korbanot. You follow? Right? Notice, Mo, God can't talk to Moshe until the Shekhinah returns from the Olam Because where did God talk to Moshe up until now? God talked to Moshe before, after Chet Egel. Where did God talk to Moshe from? Where? Oh, Which Oh Hamoid? Mechutz the Machane, remember? In Parsha Kitisa? Mm-hmm. And when God wanted to talk to Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe had to go outside the camp. And only God, God, God can't be with... They don't deserve the Shekhinah. If God's going to talk to Moshe, then outside the camp. Okay. When's the first time God talks to Moshe inside the camp? Basuli Mikdash for Shekhanti, B'tocham. And therefore... The fact that God now is willing to talk to Moshe Rabbeinu in the camp, oh, that's a sign that what? God's happy. That God's happy, okay? That's a sign the Shekhinah has returned. Now, again, what brings the Shekhinah in Sefer Shemot? Kashem Tziba Hashem Moshe. What brings the Shekhinah in Sefer Bamidbar? Leadership working together. Unity. It's called Achdu. Got it? The point? The two things? You give too much credit. What? The Nesim. Were... Because sometimes you need to take initiative. Well, I'm, because they, they, didn't come, they didn't come through right away. What do you mean right away? They didn't come through right away with the donations. Okay, it could be. Okay, but they, they made up for it. So but maybe they did to Shiva even better. When he says, Kah me down, yeah. he's saying, accept it. Yeah. Now, I, I, think it's something, I, I think it's something very positive, what, what they're doing. What? I'm sure I think it's something very positive. Because yeah. it, it, look at the detail. Chumash gives tells us that they all brought the same thing. And God wants it, and God accepts that korban. It's, it's simple, Pshad, is you're doing a good thing. You can't, there's a theme of leadership of Sefer Babidbar, which is important. Now, therefore, when should we go now to Israel? We can't leave after Rosh Chodesh Islam because we have a 12 day Kiddush. Correct? We can't leave the next day, it's Erev Pesach. We have Pesach, and we bring korban Pesach and Perak Teh, don't we? Why don't we leave two days later? Do we keep Chagamat so? Probably not, because not, we're not in Israel yet. Okay. So we should leave the 16th or the 17th of Nisan. Why don't we leave right away to Israel? Because you told me we don't leave to the 20th of, of Iyar, right? Why can't we leave right away? What are we waiting for? They set up the camp. Yeah? What? They set up the camp. No, we waited we, for something else. We, we were supposed to go, but um, I'll give you an example of what happens in school sometimes. You might remember this in class. The bell rings, right? And there's this kid in class who says, is there homework? <laughs> Remember those kids? These get pink bellies in my days. You don't know what that is. You remember a pink belly? You don't know that. You don't have to do that anymore. Um, yeah. There's kids who will, like ruin, ruin it for everybody. In the army, it's called a shilat kit bag. Okay, kit bag is your, is your bag. So what do you call it? When you're about to go like, on a hike, so when one of the soldiers asks, you know, they say, do you have to bring your gun and your you know, backpack? So he says, do we bring our, or the big duffel? <laughs> it's called a shilat kit bag. And then says, and because that's such a stupid question, everyone has to bring... The bag. So that's what's called, uh, and it's, sl- it's slang in Israel. It's called, ask your friends there. It's called a Sheila kit bag. Yeah, when you ask a stupid question, it every, gets everybody in trouble. It's, um, that's, that's the nickname for it. Now, um, so that's a bad example, but that's what's happening. <laughs> what happened? Mm-hmm. Uh, there were these open, or- oh, I can't be careful. Um, <laughs> there were these modern people who said, who, what do you go, who said, listen, Korban Pesach is so important. They have, I call it the first FOMO. I don't know what a FOMO is, but tell them. A FOMO is fear of missing out. Okay? This is the first FOMO. Why? Because there's some people who couldn't bring carbon Pesach with everybody else. And they're missing out, right? So they're looking for a, for a cooler, aren't they? They go to the rabbi, listen, carbon Pesach, big deal, the whole big thing. So we're telling you, so leave us alone, let us, what do we want to do? We want to bring it with everybody else. What answer are they hoping for? Second chance. 
No, no, they weren't hoping for that. That was that was directly oh, yeah. that. They said, eh, it's okay. Like with Chizkiel, if you know the story later on. In fact, remember with Chizkiel? With the, with the Pesach he brings? He says, you know, it's okay. There's a big deal. Yeah. And what do you call it? Okay. If you know that story. But they're hoping for a kula, aren't they? That's why they go to the rabbi. Moshe's not sure. He'd like to give a kula, right? And what's God tell him? Yes, wait a <laughs> minute. <laughs> right? It's a nice idea, but wait a minute. You can't, you know, we... On the one hand, we can't bring it your tamay. On the other hand, you're right. Therefore, you know what? We're all going to wait a month until, until, until you guys have a chance. Wait for the next full moon. Because okay? you have to bring it on a full moon. Why? That's a cool question. Okay? But you need a... Remember, it's always on a full moon. It's good for lighting and traveling. In case you didn't realize that. Don't you realize why we leave Egypt on the 15th? You need lighting, don't you? You have a full moon on the 15th of the month. It's been that way ever. It always works out that way. The 15th is always a full moon. <laughs> Remember you come from Shof and Pesach for the Seder? It's always a full moon. I don't know. No. no um, the English calendar doesn't work that way, but the Jewish calendar always works by the moon. Now, the, um, I'm sorry. So we have to wait a month, don't we? Now, now we've got to kill time. So what are we going to do? Huh? Now we make another census. Why? When do we make the... That's the, the book's out of order. Like all comes out. But Seder Bar 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 begins on what day? On the first day, the second month, doesn't it? And what do we do? We have nothing to do. So what do you do? You have a mifkad. If you know B'nai Kiva. <laughs> What's a mifkad? You know how many kids. You have to count. You have to, because the mifkad is not to count people. Because how many, we, count, we know exactly how many people there are. Because we get the exact same number, don't we? It's the same 603, 550. Parshim have a heyday. How could how how the numbers be the same? It, the answers are relevant. We're not counting how many people there are. You don't do a census every six months. You do a census every 10 years, even today. Okay. But what? People need to know they count. You understand? Because when you do a census, you get what's called, what's the word? Pukuda. Pukuda is when you bring charged. A pukuda, no, it's, when you count people, you stand in a chet, you know what that is? Mm-hmm. You know? And the main thing is not counting them, but rather giving them a message. Mm-hmm. And people have to know that they make a difference. Remember? You count their heads, you count the, um, in the South Rosh, you, you count people's heads, not bodies. Mm-hmm. But the, people need to know that they count. That's why the word is called Chumash Apkudim. Hashem Pakad, doesn't mean, remember Pakad, Pakadati, doesn't mean I remember to keep a promise. I'm, I'm giving you a charge. Hashem Pakad at Sarai, as a sort of, it's a joke, but there, is that bring up a child is, is a command. It's not a, it's, it's a job to do. No, it's a Pakuda is, is in the army. I mean, Pakad is, is a command. Hashem Pakad at Sarai, I remember to promise you something. I remember to command you something. You have to bring up Yitzchak and make him my nation. Now, um, same thing with Amalek, but that's too complicated for now. Now, back to, um, back to Chumash. Back to um, Yom Hashmini, finally, aren't we? <laughs> Understand what we did now? How many um, sensai was? What? Three, three sensai or two? There's one when, when, they, when they did the Pukudim of the Mishkan, yes. and, and the, right after Yom Kippur, when they started out. Another one in the first day of the second month, killing time. Get ready to go. Because after Pesach Sheni, we wait two, three, three, four days and we travel. Remember, we're waiting for a, a little anticipation. Remember, because when's the Anan go up? On the 20th of Iyar, two, three days after Korban Pesach, the Anan goes up. You have to get over the, the Matzah and Pesach, clean up a little bit. Yeah. What? We, we wait, got, you know, we're waiting, we're, we're expecting to go right after Pesach Sheni. We wait a couple of days. Get a little anticipation. Is it, hey, the Anan leave yet or not? So finally, the Anan goes up and they travel. That's, yeah, three days and three, and then we have... Oh, three no, the third one is the new generation. In Parshat Pinchas... 26, chapter 26. That's chapter 20. That's, that's, the, that's before going to Israel. Okay. But it should have, we shouldn't have needed it, but because of Chetam Raglin, that generation doesn't go in. And many people die in the desert. The last time anyone dies in Sefer Bar is with Pinchas and the Magifa. Who stopped the Magifa? Pinchas, right? Magifa and Etzara. And right afterwards... Because that's the last time anyone dies in the desert. And therefore, as soon as the Magifa stops, then we have the census, because anyone who survived the Magifa, Pinchas, goes into Israel. You know that passage by heart. Anyone who survived <coughs> Bapor made it to Israel. And therefore, the Mifkad is who's going to get the land. It's Mifkad and Achalot. That's the third one. But the first one, the first two is really the same Mifkad. The first two is really the same number. 
Same number. Same number, same people. But, but, but the, the, the second one was just, a, it's, you're killing time. You, yeah. Do have bracha, you understand what I mean. Okay. There's nothing worse with kids with nothing to do. You need, some, you need to do something. You follow? You can't do nothing. Because last time you did nothing, we get chatego. Yeah, but it's very alarming. <laughs> when you take a census, people get worried. Um, uh, get worried. They, they, worried. They, they always get worried. What do they worry about? That's all. What? You got to keep people busy. You have to whitewash the fence if you need to. You have to very fence. What? What? Okay, okay. okay. So listen, we'll go. Okay. Uh, now I gotta get to Yom Hashmini. Okay. Now, so listen. In Yom Hashmini, what happened? We have to finish up in a couple of minutes, right? Yeah. In Yom Hashmini, what time did we start at? I forgot. I think we're about an hour. Oh, okay. okay. The tape's gonna run out. You have to switch the cassette. Okay. Okay. So listen, um, we finally got to Yom Hashmini. Got it? Why? Because Yom Hashmini has to be the same day. Because what's gonna happen on this day? Yom HaShmini, Moshe calls, God calls Moshe in and tells him, bring these korbanot, why? Ki hayom Hashem nirah Got it? Why do you have to bring these korbanot? Because today, God Shekhinah is coming. What day was that? Rosh Chodesh Nisan. So Yom HaShmini has to be that day. It's got to be. Now, why do we need to bring korbanot? And this is a big question, so I want to end with. Okay? Where do we get it from anyway? What? what? Where they have Korbanot to bring, anyway. Well, we stole them from the Egyptians. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, we left with Batsona Bakar. We, left with, we have lots of cattle. That was our job back then, anyhow. Why did, so. why did we have to wait by Harsinai Pesach? Why did it have to be over there? You can't leave until everyone brings Korban Pesach. Why? Why? Korban I mean, Pesach. I couldn't have done it a month later anywhere else. You have to, we have to, it's, I, that's a good reason, but... I, I, I agree with you, I would have said that, but Chomish seems to say everyone has to wait. There's no doubt we're waiting for everyone to bring Korban Pesach, because it explains why, it explains chapter 9 in 10 in, in Sefer Bamidbar. It explains what, what takes so long in the desert. Now, um, what happened next? I'm sorry, so now we're looking at the beginning of Parshat Shemini. The question is, bring these Korbanot in order that the Shekhinah will come. In other words, does bringing the Korbanot bring the Shekhinah? Or does bring the Karbonot reflect that you're ready for the Shekhinah? You understand? What does God tell Moshe to do? Okay. Good. This is a special day. And on this special day, we bring two sets of Karbonot. Aaron has to bring a Egel HaChatat, an Ayolola, correct? And the people bring a, a what? What do the people bring? A Sir LaChatat and Shor Ayol Shlamin. And an and and Ayolola and a Shor Ayol Shlamin. In other words, there's two groups of people. There's the Kohen Gadol brings the special korban, a chatat and olah, and the people bring a chatat and olah and a shlamin, yeah, which, late, which is the prototype for Yom Kippur without the shlamin, isn't it? Because Yom Kippur is going to relive Yom Hashmini. We'll see why in a minute. But now, because, now, this commandment of Yom Hashmini, why do I need it? And I want to do something about korbanot. Let's, let's read, read, read the opening sukim. Hold on. That's the parallel to Yom Kippur. It's the same thing in Achrimot. Continue. Achrimot. Oh, that's after, that's the parsh after. Achrimot was given on Yom Hashmini, wasn't it? Because that's Achrimot. Our own son's died on Yom Hashmini. And Akhremot is the same commandment that they do at the door of. Continue. Okay, now listen here. For sure, Vayal Shlamim. Ki Hayom Hashem Nira Lechem. Now, is this going to bring the Shekhinah? Or this because, I'll give you an example. Let's say someone's coming for dinner, right? Because they're coming, someone's coming to visit you, you make a dinner. Right? How come you're making the dinner? Because you're coming to visit. Now, if you would make the dinner, is that going to bring them? You know what I'm saying? If I make the same dinner, they're not going to come. But rather, because they're coming, I make the dinner. Anyone understand that? I'm getting at? Yes. So it's not that the korban is going to bring the guest. But rather, because the guest is coming, I bring a korban. It shows, it's going to show my guests that I'm happy that they're there. And therefore, why am I bringing the korban in Sefer Vayikra? Not to bring the Shekhinah, but rather, to show God we want the Shekhinah. That's important. Because I want to understand korbanot. Are ref- korbanot don't bring Shekhinah, they reflect your willingness to want to want to represent God. Now read the next two lines. Okay, yeah. 
ויאמר משה, זה הדבר אשר ציווה אדוני תעשו, וירא עליכם כבוד אדוני. Here's what you need to do, so the God's שכינה. You have to show God you want to come. But had we not built a Mishkan Kasher Siva Hashem Moshe, God wouldn't have even brought up this possibility. Now that it's final and official, now we have a special act. Now, what's going to happen on that day? They do all the Korbanot. And um, we have time for a little more? Mm-hmm. One mm-hmm. more Kiddush. Okay. Skip to Chaf Aleph, the end of Chaf Aleph. The end of Per... In Perek Tet, Pasa Chaf Aleph. The Korban's over. He does everything. You'll see how many times in that line, Kasher Siva Hashem and Moshe. You can't miss it. Zad the Barashir Siva Hashem Tasu. You see that same Kasher... We're back to the theme of the end of the You can't miss this continuation of Perak Mem. It's the same Kasher Siva Hashem and Moshe over and over again. Continue. Pasa Chav Aleph. Ah, what belongs here? Birkat Kohanim. Where's Birkat Kohanim? Where is Sefer Bamidbar? Right before the Nesim. It should be in Perak Zayin. The chapter's messed up on it. It doesn't belong with Nazir, it belongs in Perak Zayin, doesn't it? With the Nesim, because it's the same day. The first Birkat Kohanim is there, but Birkat Kohanim is leadership. It's a leadership thing, Birkat Kohanim. Because the Kohen's job as leaders is to bless the people by teaching them Torah, but that's all different shit. Okay, continue. Whoa, what happened? We brought all the Korban note. What should happen? The Shekinah should come, right? What did Moshe and Aaron do? They go to the Omoed. Why? Why are they going in? What do they do after they go in? They go out. <laughs> you understand? They <coughs> <coughs> so what do they do there? So what did Chazal say? Well, read, finish the Pasuk now. Uh, ah. yes. What was necessary for the Shekinah to come? Moshe and Aaron had to go inside. Not to leave. What did they go in for? Guess what Chazal is going to say. Why did they go in? <laughs> to David. Yeah. To David. And what Tefillah did they say? No, no, that was beforehand. Remember Vino Hashem Aleinu? Remember Chazal said they say Vino Hashem Masei Dav Kananeo? Which is what Perak and Tehillim? It's your Shev Yisrael Tehillim, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Right before it's the end of, what Perak is that in Tehillim? Mm-hmm. What? 90. 90, yeah. Sadi. Then Sadi, Hashem said that. He's more Shev Yisrael Sadi Bet, isn't it? The guy's name Elyon. Now, what's, 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 ni- how does 90 begin? What's the parak tzadi into? You said that this morning. Don't remember? Mizmor Mizmor ninety, tzadi. Tefillah Moshe. What did Chazal say? It's the only parak that begins Tefillah Moshe. What was his Tefillah? That was the Tefillah he gave in Hakamata Mishkan. It's awesome, isn't it? Anyway, I thought you know that's where it's coming from. Right? That's uh, what I'm getting at, like this. Okay. What brings the Shechina? So Chazal understand that. Um, Moshe was worried that, hey, it's not working. The Shekinah didn't come. And therefore they had a daven, and after they daven, then they came. I think it's more than that. I think the goal of the day, because it's exactly Yom Kippur, the, what brings the Shekinah, not the Korban? Moshe and Aaron going into the Omoed, what's that reliving? What's that showing God? If the Mishkan is little Harsinai, it's showing God we want to be on Harsinai, which is the Abu Dhabi Yom Kippur. In other words, the Abodan Yom Kippur, and, and which is the continuation of this, it's Parshat Acharimot. What's the Abodan Yom Kippur? It, is the goal of the Abodan to sprinkle the blood? Right? Or is the goal of the Abodan is to enter? Remember, B'zot Yavodan Al HaKodesh. What is the goal of Yom Kippur? Is entering the Kodesh Kodeshim the highlight of the day? You understand? Because what, symbolically, what are we doing in Yom Kippur? We're showing God we want to be back on our Sinai. The Kohen Gadol entering the Kodesh Kodeshim is the highlight of the day. That's the enter. But before you go in, you have to show God you don't deserve to be there. So what do I need to do? I need what's called Kapara, or Kapara, which is protection from Shekhinah. What's happening? This is a dialect of, of Chumash in Jewish history, where on the one hand, we want to be God's people, and we want to show God I want to be as close as possible. On the other hand, we mess up all the time, and we need Midot Torah Hamim. Got it? And Midat Adin, we sh- if, we, if, if it's like Har Sinai, what should happen if we're not worthy for Har Sinai? We're going to get burnt, aren't we? It's like walking to a fire. 
And therefore, the Kohen Gadol going into the Kodesh Kodeshim is showing God, we want to be your people. We want to be back on our Sinai. But I want to show God, I want to be there, but I don't deserve to be there because we're an Am Kshe'orev. So what do I do to show God I'm getting something I don't deserve? I need a ritual called Kapara, which is protection from Shechina, like the, like the Kaporet. Or the whole idea of kapara. Remember, kapara is a covering, like like by the. Uh, that's a whole. I'm sure on, on like by the by the. Uh, remember the um, the teva, the chafar toto. A, a protective covering is kapara, and therefore I need to show God. That was my my I, the idea is that the main thing that brings the shechina on Yom Hashmini, and the main thing we're doing in Kippur is entering the kodesh kodeshim. The goal is not God doesn't need the blood and God doesn't need the animal. He's not hungry. But rather, I need to do something symbolic. That's what symbolism is. Something about, it shows, I want to show God, I want to be His people. But at the same time, I want to recognize I'm not worthy of that. And therefore, I need a kapara ritual. And therefore, if you're, on what's happening in Yom Shmini, God's willing to bring Yishchina back, even though we're in Amkshayorev. And I need to bring korbanot that reflect that understanding. And therefore, I bring an egyam, never for a chatat. And Amisar always brings a ser la chatat. The chatat and the olah, Always go, it's, a, it's called a korban machshiri, they get you ready. But I need to do something symbolic to show God that I want to be close, but I'm not deserving to be close, but I want to be close anyhow. It's called a dialectic, if you understand how they... It, it was, you want a relationship, but you have to realize it's lopsided. But we want it anyhow. Like a spoiled kid. We always give in, and, and that's... Now, what enables that, that's midot rachamim. And that's why the whole theme of Yom Kippur will be midot rachamim. They come with it. That's all the tefillah is that idea. Because what enables... On the one hand, you want to show... A dedication to God, at the same time you want to be, you want to show God that I'm worthy of that. So how do you find the balance between them? You go, but you cover yourself. You follow? You go and you put, you put a, a smoke screen in front of you. Remember? And then um, special clothing, but of course you need the Anan. Ki banan or laktoret. There always has to be like the Anan and Harsinai. You need some protective, that's Mizbah Ktoret, which is a whole, which is Kapara as well. It was, I need, and that's why Mizbah Ktoret is after the whole unit of Shekinah and Truma Tetzaveh. It's a whole big theme inside. But basically, the, the rituals that we're doing, especially in Yom HaShemini, if I understand them, they're presenting this whole idea that we saw that the Mishkan is a mini Har Sinai. So then, in, in, um, in Sefer Vayikra, it's doing rituals that will bring the Shekinah, that enable the Shekinah to come. Now, if I want each book. So Sefer Shemot, I have to show God and Maling as a group, as a nation, to follow. I can do a group project and follow instructions. In Bamidbar, I need leadership. In Sefer Vayikra, I need to be dedicated, I need to understand the meaning of ritual. That I need to do actions that reflect my feelings and understandings. But don't think for a minute that the Korban brings the Shechina. Because then it becomes, that's what Yirmiya was talking about in Haftarah today. You guys read the right one. If you're not acting properly, what's the point of Korbanot? That's exactly why, that's exactly why you read that. It's a perfect Haftarah for Korban, for Pasha Tzav, because you would think all God wants is sacrifice. And instead, we say, God wants masim, but you need to bring sacrifices to remember how to behave. Which is, that, that's what mitzvot are about in general. So therefore, I have to find the meaning of the korbanot, and that's why to feel like a negative korbanot, that's the same idea inside. Okay, so that's why we, wanted, we finally got the Pasha Shmini. But now, what happens, why is, why is their initiative, Nadav and Aviyu, a bad one? Right? Because if you look in the introduction, what did God tell Moshe? Here's what to do. Here's the protocol. And these guys are trying to outdo, remember what Chazal say? They gave halacha lifnei rabam. They meant well, but they didn't have the right... You know, that leadership was more of a gava. You follow? Oh, because I, I can outdo God. Chazal say, you know, it's God said, I'll bring my shechina, and they didn't trust him. So they brought, it's called, they brought fire from the hediot. They brought, it's like when you shake, like, you shake the table for the coast of Eliel, so the kids think that he's drinking the wine. You have that trick? You know, you don't, you don't, you don't really believe that he's going to drink the wine, so you kick the table a little bit, so... It, the wine falls down and the kids think he's drinking it. He never did that? Yeah. So we did. That's what they did to me when I was a little kid. I believed it. Yeah. So, the, um, uh, so the, what they're doing is they're bringing, they're saying, we don't, they're, sometimes you don't take initiative. Right? That's the way things have to be. You have to follow them. Sometimes you need initiative. Knowing when initiatives are good or bad. So initiatives that come from true leadership and caring. And because and, you need leadership, but leadership that comes out of gava. And oh, I want to be, you know, I want to get, that's a bad one. Again, how to apply that, that's, that's good. You need a rabbi that's, that's That's a rough one. But it should never lead to the point that no one takes any leadership because we're afraid of doing something wrong. But it can't be that everything, every idea everyone comes up with is always the right thing to do. 
You know, finding the balance of when to take leadership and not take leadership, that's a challenge of Jewish history all the time. And that's where our community is always there. Fighting, but we should argue about it, at least in a, in a mature way, hopefully. And hopefully God will give us the right direction. Okay, so we're, time's up pretty much, but that's our Yom HaShemini. We've pretty much covered all Chumash. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Okay, thank you.